Hello, my name is Nicolas Osborne. I'm currently an intern at Tides in the process of completing my master's degree in computer science at University de Lille. At Tides, I work under the supervision of the second author, Clément Pascouto, who is in the process of completing a PhD at Tides and University Paris Saclay with Jean Christophe Filla. The goal of the work I'm presenting today is to provide OCaml developers a tool that allows to automatically generate fuzzy suits based on formal specifications. This work is based on three other pieces of software. I will briefly present them in the following slides. Gospel is a formal specification language for OCaml interfaces. It lets you write formal properties that you expect from your program. The project was initiated by Jean-Christophe Filiatre and Mario Pereira. Ortac is a runtime assertion checking tool. It uses Gospel specification to generate OCaml code that checks them at runtime. It is mostly maintained by Clément Pascouto. And finally, Monolith is a model-based threading framework developed by François Poitier. Specifically, today's work is a front-end for Ortac. Let's have a quick overview of the workflow with the front end to advertise how easy to use our tool is. To begin with, the developer writes down the properties they want to check in the form of gospel specifications alongside the functions and types declaration in the .mli file. Then they can call or tag specifying the front end, again the monolith one. We will print on the standard output the generated code so the developer can redirect it to a file of his choosing. At this point, main.ml contains the further code that you would usually write by hand. Finally, after compiling this file, they can run the general batch of tests using AFL files. You can see that it is really simple to use. The remaining important part of your job is to write the specification. This is going to be a four parts presentation. First, I'm going to briefly present the gospel specification language and OTRAC. Then I will talk a bit about the work of introducing a modular architecture into OTRAC to allow different verifications front ends. I will then dive into the details of the monolith front end and how it can help automate the writing of fuzzing suits. And finally, I will present some experimental applications of our technique to existing code bases of the MirageOS ecosystem. I will conclude with discussing some of the limitations of the tool on, in its current state and the work perspectives that are planned for the future. Let's take a quick look at an example of gospel specification and what our tag does with that. Gospel is a contract-based behavioral specification language. Here you can see a very simple example of such a specification for a Remax function. They are written in a special command starting with the at character. The first line called the header gives names to the arguments on the return value so that we can talk about them later. The next line states a precondition. The array shouldn't be empty here. And the two last one states post conditions that the written value should be in the given array and that there is no other integer in the given array that is bigger than the written value. This is only a very quick glance at the spirit of gospel specifications. The language is quite rich and we are not going to detail all its features now, but here is a reference if you are interested. Based on this specification, our talk will generate a what version of this function, checking the specifications at runtime. At its core, OTAC translates a subset of the spell into OCaml Boolean expressions. This allows to generate a code that is in the ID similar to the one on the slide. The generated code has three main parts. First, it will check that the precondition holds on the given argument. If the test fails, we, are, we act accordingly, we with a behavior defined by OTAC. Here, the OTAC error. 
then it will it will call the original function for the computation with a given argument and store the return value in a variable. And finally, it will check that the post condition holds given the return value before returning it. Here again, if the contract is violated, the program will have the behavior defined by R. At the end, we have two versions of the same function, the original implementation on the wrapped version with runtime assertion checking. Again, I omitted a lot of the details and checks that ORTOC performs. It also checks type invariance, unexpected exceptions, and so on. More details are available in this upcoming publication at RV21 this fall. Because ORTOC can be used in various settings, I first had to come up with an architecture that allows to easily add front end to ORTOCs. No, defining a front end mostly consists in two parts. The first part is defining what to do in case of contract violation. The default behavior is that an exception is ready, but one can, for example, build a front end that will only report preconditions violations in order to inform the clients of the library that they are not using it correctly, or just log violations for future inspection. The idea is to be very flexible. The second part lets you embed custom code alongside the wrap version of the library. So the front-end developer can use its, this wrap version in any way he wants. Once I had this modular architecture, I built a monolith front-end for RTAC. The idea is to automatically generate a standalone monolith feather ready to run out of the box. So first, what is monolith? Monolith is a model test based test framework that allows to fuzz library. In a, in a nutshell, the user provides two implementations of the same library, a trusted one called the reference and the candidate. Monolith will then test whether given the same input, the candidate will return the same value as the reference. As Ortac lets us with two versions of the same library, we can easily use Monolith. But which one of these two versions will be the reference? As the wrap version checks all the contracts of the specifications, it makes sense to choose it as the reference. This is the version that behave accordingly to the contracts. This is the version we trust. That was for Monolith and how we use it. Let's now turn to the specific, let's now turn to the specifics of the Monolith front end. We call that defining a front end lets us define violation handling and adding custom code. Let's start with the custom code. Like every test framework, Monolith involves a lot of boilerplate code. In the case of Monolith, it mainly consists in the test declarations and data in the generators and serializer for user defined types. Our front end leverage the styping information from the specifications to automatically generate them. Finally, we need a reference on the candidate module. We use the rough code as a reference and the original code as a candidate. Now that we have seen how to handle the boilerplate via custom code embedding, let's turn to the more interesting question of the contract violation. The case of post conditions is pretty straightforward. In general, Monolith checks that the candidate returns the same value as the one returned by the reference. So we just need the reference to not return the computed value in case of contract violation. This is easily done by raising an exception defined by author when a contract is violated. For example, if the implementation of our function RMAX returns an integer that is not in the array, the original version will return that integer, while the wrapped one will raise an exception. Monolith will spot the difference and return of the return values and act accordingly. On the other hand, if the original implementation indeed returns the maxim maximum of the array, then as no contract has been violated, both functions will return the return value and monolith will consider the run correct. The case of the precondition 
is a bit different. So, indeed, precondition violations are only interesting for the client and the library. Since the function itself is not even run, there is no information about its behavior. And since monolith will feed the function under the test some random inputs, these inputs won't necessarily respect the function's preconditions. So, in order to avoid a lot of noise, we do not report preconditions violations as errors. Instead, a special monolith exception called please back off will be raised and monolith will gently ignore the test case. With these steps, we are able to automatically and completely generate the fuzzer. At Taridesk, we are starting to use this technique in real-world libraries. So let's take a look at these experimentations. Of course, as Ortac and its front end are in early stage of development, the story is still short. We used this tool to test modules of the library opt-int on the traversal of graph in Irmin, which both are both part of the Mirage OS project and maintained at Taridesk. I was able to write some specifications for both of them. It showed that our technique can handle decently large specifications, but also highlight some of the limitations of both Gospel and R. Let's take a look at one of these specifications. Here is a sample of the specification for the graph traversal. The function iter executes a traversal of the graph in topological order and puts the verticals in the resulting array in the order it encoded them. I won't go into the details here, but you can see, for example, that the first clause expresses the fact that the verticals present in the argument skip are really skipped in the traversal. Now, about the limitations on perspectives. Some of these limitations come from the core of ORTAC itself. Most of them will disappear when ORTAC will support a larger part of Gospel. And other limitations are related to the front end itself. I'm going to focus on one of them, which is data generation. In the current state of the front end, the arguments for the functions are generated according to the structure of their types. But no consideration is taken with respect to specifications that would restrict the possible values of these arguments. For example, in our function rmax, the, gen the generated argument can be an empty array. Thanks to the special monolith exception, the test won't be taken into consideration. But it's it is still generated. And even with the fuzzing, a lot of bad inputs are still generated, especially if this preconditions describes a small input, input space compared to the type of the arguments. To overcome this limitation, we have presently two beginning of leads. The first one is to allow the user to plug specific generators written by hand. This can be easily done but goes a bit against the idea of ORTAC being a completely automatic tool. The second one still requires a bit of investigations to determine if it is viable. The idea is to find a mean to generate a generator given a type and gospel terms. This would allow to always generate inputs that respect preconditions. It is not clear at the moment that it is even possible, but if it is, it would allow to always have valid inputs for the functions we test. In conclusion, I have presented the monolith front end for ORTAC that allows to leverage formal specifications written in Gospel to generate a standalone monolith program ready to be fed. There is still some exciting work to do in order to ORTAC and its front ends to be production ready. But this already seems to be a promising way to get more guarantees about OCaml programs with limited effort from developers. Thank you for your attention. Just know that all the software I've talked about is open source and that Ortac and Gospel are available on GitHub under the OCaml Gospel organization.